This is the Hammond Manus Model A, built by Deutsche Telefon Worker, or DTW. It was invented by Christian Hammond, who was one of the great calculator inventors of all time. He went by Christel. In 1923, he patented a new mechanism, uh, Schlautenklicken. It has been translated several different ways, but switching latch seems to be the most common translation. The switching latch was actually invented by uh, Jakob Leopold in the 1720s. He never actually built a device. He died early, but uh, his plans were used by other inventors later, which look nothing like Hammond's machines. There are some good schematics online, although it's still hard to understand. I'll leave some, a couple links, but Peter Hartel has a good book on it, and uh, Christian Hammond, no relation to Christian Hammond, also has a good um, description of it. There's a good YouTube video explaining it from the uh, Arithmium. Je weiter also der Einstellhebel nach unten gezogen wird, desto mehr. For me, it didn't really make sense until I got this little uh, sample. Here, uh, you see the the main driving gear with its 36 teeth on the outside and on the inside. Now my model is a little bit rough. I've been having a hard time adjusting it, like every person's had a hard time with this mechanism. But in essence, that little red paw will drive the teeth when it's, when it's driving the inside teeth when it's out. And when it's not extended, it does not drive the teeth. So the, the trick is to find a way to extend that, to extend and retract that uh, at will. Now in practice, it had two paws, which would probably make it a bit more secure. So here it's on nine, and when it gets right there, the paws will drop and engage, and it will turn the gears nine times until it reaches uh, that other cam where it lifts up out of the way. Now when I set it to zero here, the, the cam blocks the, the location of the, I don't know what these pieces are called, of the other cam piece, and it doesn't drop, and the poles don't engage. So this is my Model A with its extremely tight case latch. Being the first of the series, some of its features seemed a bit half-baked. For example, to clear the carriage or to add numbers to it manually, the whole carriage needs to be shifted all the way to the left. Otherwise, you see there, I, I'm not able to do it. But when you put it in left, it puts it into a neutral position. There's two ways to get there. You can press all the way down, and uh, then, then the thing is, carriage is spring-loaded. Or you can press that release there, which moves it left one space at a time. And once you're there, you can finally clear it. It has that little add multiplication button and dial, actually, and when it can clear the inputs. Now, when it's in addition mode and you turn the crank, it automatically clears them after each entry. You can s switch it over to multiplication mode and it won't do that. It does have a bell. That little bulge in front hides a row of intermediate gears. Now I'm not going to take the cover off mine. I did that when I first bought it a few years ago. And each of those levers has a spring that caused me a lot of trouble to get it back. So I didn't want to do it again. But here's a photo from uh, Yap Scarphouse's website that shows that row of intermediate gears. And the crank on this machine only turns one way. So when you put it into subtraction mode, the carriage shifts just half step in order to interact with the intermediate gear. So we can kind of peek at the mechanism in between without taking the cover off. And first I'll add 9. And when I add, you see that it's interacting with the uh, main gear. And then I'll shift it to subtraction. It'll shift half a step whereas the carriage will now interact with the intermediate gear 
and turn the opposite direction for subtraction. On the A, there's no way to change the direction of the counter. You, the machine would just subtract for subtraction and, and add for addition. So if I want to multiply 365 by 365, the best option would be to shift the carriage over three spots. So you start in the hundreds position. Now here I've added one too many, so I'll shift it to subtraction, and then take off that last addition. Now it's 365 times 365. So this machine has automatic division, which was impressive for a machine in 1925. Now again, it's a uh, version A, so its division is a little bit janky. And it takes me a little while to learn it every single time I go to do it. So first you have to shift it all the way to the left like I did before you enter the numbers in. But then it's kind of hard to figure out which, which place I want to manually enter those numbers, where they're going to line up. So what I inevitably end up doing is pushing it to the right and then entering my numbers in where I want, them, where I want the divisor to start. So here I'll enter in uh, 355. And uh, I just add it to there. Now I have to shift it all the way back left again to clear out the um, counter mechanism. So I'll, I'll uh, clear it out, which I somehow forgot to do. So I go back, and whoops, now I've cleared them both. So I'll go back and add 355 again. Go back left, clear the counter, go back right, put the, put the uh, machine in the D, which is division mode. Now here I've already made another mistake, and um, when I start cranking, you'll see it's not, it's not really working. It's not shifting, it's not subtracting. It, so what I forgot to do was to put that carriage into the division mode while it was in the left-hand position. So uh, I just figured out I did that mistake and I'll clear it on out again, go back to the right, add 355, go back to the left, clear out the counter, put in the D, then go back to right. Now I'm ready to go. So I'll put it in 113, and just start cranking away. When you're in the D mode, it's in like a neutral position. And the uh, add subtract lever doesn't do anything. But it's kind of a, a violent spring, so I have to hold it with my left hand. Otherwise it scoots around the table quite a bit. But it's working, even if it did take me a few tries to get there. There were about two or three takes before this take that I mess it up. So that's the Hammond Man Manus. I almost said menace. That was a genuine Freudian slip. That's what happens when I don't write a script for this. So sure, this Model A was a bit unrefined, but Hammond and DTW would find their stride. They made Hammond Manus calculators for 45 years until 1970. Thanks for watching.